Praise the Lord to everyone. We bring you greetings from Greater Works Apostolic New Life Centers Ministries. We give honor to God today and to all of you, the viewing audience. Greater Works, praise the Lord to you as well. Lady Fikes, uh, behind the scenes, Sister Mykesha and uh, Elder Fikes and Minister Melissa. Praise the Lord to everyone. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are excited today to bring you the bread of life one more time. Um, it gives me great pleasure uh, to introduce our, our speaker today for the Christian education, none other than our very own Lady Fikes, who is our superintendent. Uh, we just thank God for her uh, and her ministry. We thank God for all of you out there in the viewing audience. We would like for you to uh, send us comments and, and perhaps share. Share with a friend, relative, tell them to share as well. We thank you for your efforts. We thank you for your charitable uh, contributions as well. We thank God for the sick list that uh, is now healed. Uh, we thank God for that mm -hmm. today as well. Uh, this is our second, I believe, second Sunday, amen, of the calendar year 2022. Mm -hmm. What did you tell God that you were going to do this year that you didn't do last year? You know, one thing about God, he's a promise keeper. Amen. He's a promise keeper. And, you know, we have to live up to our word as well. Our word is our bond. So this year, let's get busy. Let's go forth. Let's advance the kingdom of God. I believe that this is what our purpose is here at Greater Works. And I believe that God is on our side this morning and this year, 2022. Now, we're going to have a speaker today as well. That's Elder Fikes. He's coming forth a little later on today in our services. Please stay tuned uh, for him as well. Just uh, get your Bibles out. Uh, let's get ready. Let's get ready for this, this Bible class. I believe it's going to benefit somebody out there in our viewing audience in Jesus' name. So let's prepare for the word. Let's receive our very own our lady, first lady at Greater Works uh, Apostolic New Life Center, none other than Evangelist Valerie Fikes. Let's receive her with a hearty amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lady Fikes. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Fikes, and praise the Lord to everyone <coughs> bringing you greetings on this morning, on this ninth day of January, giving God glory for even allowing us one more opportunity to be in the land of the living, thanking him for all the things that he's done thus far. We're going to get right into this lesson, and Pastor hit it right on the nose. He said uh, God has promises that he has uh, stored up for us, that he has kept for us, and the name of this lesson on this morning is Receiving the promise. We're going to talk about how we can receive the promise. We're going to talk about how Abraham did it back in the day in the Old Testament and how it is still new to us uh, in this day. How we can take what God says and uh, just hold on to it knowing that it is an amen, hallelujah, that it will come to pass. So, our lesson this morning is receiving the promise. The big idea is we will receive God's promises by faith. Now, when we talk about receiving God's promises by faith, it's because we can't see, often we can't see God working. And when, when we know that God has spoken something into our lives, we don't, always see it coming to pass but we have to believe it by faith knowing that his promises are true hallelujah so God's promises all come by faith knowing that this God see you have to know enough about the promise keeper when you know enough about him 
you can rest assured that everything that he said that was going to happen shall come to pass. Hallelujah. That was our big idea. The, the focus verse that we're going to talk about comes from in the book of Genesis chapter 12, 1 through 3. And it says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. You see all the things that God is promising him as he began to speak? He is, first of all, he gave him instructions and told him to leave, get out of his country, and leave his folk. Leave all of those his comfort zone. All of those that he had depended on in the past. All of those that he was raised with. Even uh, whether they were good or indifferent, he was used to them. God told him to get out of that country because when God wants to do something for you, he has to take you out of that old environment, that clouded environment, that dirtied up environment, and bring, it, bring you into a brand new environment, one that's clean, one that's swept clean, one that is true and honest, one that is righteous. That's the kind of God we serve. So he told him to get out of that country. And then once he, once he began to talk to him, and, and I, I want everybody to be into their lesson today. We're in God's Word for Life, Adult Lesson Guide, Volume 1. We're in uh, chapter or it's verse, I'm not sorry, not verse, but um, the second chapter, point one, receiving the promise. I'm sorry I didn't give you that in the beginning, but this is our book on page number 170. So follow me there, January 9th, 2022. So as God began to instruct Abraham as what to do, he made promises on the way. You see, these are things that are very encouraging to us. If we say, listen, move away from this environment uh, do thus and thus and so, and then I will begin to do thus and thus and so. And that's what uh, uh, God began to tell him. He said, I want you to move away, and then I want you to go to the land that I tell you to go to. I'm going to show you where to go, but you're going to have to follow my steps along the way. Everywhere, I'm going to direct you divinely into the place where you should go. But as you do that, I'm going to make some promises unto you, Abraham. I'm going to make you a great nation. Now, that was a little puzzling to Abraham because it was just he and his wife and maybe just a few other relatives that went with him. But God said, if you move away from that who you were trusting in the beginning and come to a land that you don't even know about, but you're trusting me for the direction. If you do that, I will make you, Abraham, a great nation. And not only that, Abraham, I will bless thee. You see, you don't want to be blessed by anybody but God. If you want to be blessed, hallelujah, ultimately let God do the blessing because that is a pure blessing. There's no sorrow with it when God blesses you. So he's telling Abraham, now I'm, I'm going to bless you. You're going to be a, a, a great nation. I will make thy name great, Abram. Now it's Abram now, but I'm about to do something to change the name. And everybody down through the generations, even the generations that are now, will know who you are, Abraham or Abram, because of what I've done. You see, when I promise you something, I keep my promises. He said, and I and thou shall be a blessing. 
So not only am I going to bless you, but you're going to be over blessed where you can bless somebody else. You see, when God blesses us, that's what he expects us to do. He expects us to take the blessing that we have and use it for our benefit and whatever is left, give it to someone else. Bless them. Hallelujah. That's the kind of God he is and that's what he wants us to do. He wants us not to keep it to ourselves or hide it from those that are coming from afar off so that they won't know what we have. But he wants us to bless them just like he has blessed us. And the more you bless others, the more God blesses you. Hallelujah. He said, and I will bless them. So in other words, when you bless them, he said, I will bless them that bless you. Those that receive you, Abraham, hallelujah, and follow after what you're going to tell them because of me. If they bless you, I'm going to bless them. Not to worry, Abraham. I'm not going to, hallelujah, kick them to the curb, but I will be blessing everybody that blessed you because I promised you that. Hallelujah. Let's go on a little further. And it said, now those that don't want to believe what uh, you're telling them, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do to them. It's a promise, Abraham. May not be a positive promise, hallelujah, for those that don't believe, but it is a promise. He said, I'm going to curse him that curseth thee. So those that don't understand you and don't and, and reject you, and, and, and ignore you and neglect who you are, not to worry, Abraham, I'm going to take care of them too. I'm going to curse them that curse you. Hallelujah. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So I'm going back to the beginning because in Abraham, everybody that believes how Abraham believed and trust in the God that Abraham trusted in, those families will be blessed. That makes me excited even now because, hallelujah, I believe what Abraham believed. I believe that God blessed him to the utmost. And because of that, I'm in the family that Abraham was in and, and is in. And God is blessing me even now. So that's something to get excited about because we are in the families, hallelujah, that were in Abraham. And he said, all the families of the earth that were in him shall be blessed. So all the families in the earth that believed that Abraham was speaking truth, that Abraham served a great and magnificent God, those families are going to be blessed. My, my, my. What a promise. Hallelujah. We weren't back in Abraham's day, but we can bring it back into today, knowing that if he was blessed back there and we believe what he believed, we can be blessed here. Hallelujah. Let's look at this lesson text and talk about receiving the promises. You see, I want you to understand that when God tells you something, when he says something, you have to know enough about God to know that he's a God that cannot lie. Hallelujah. I'm coming closer to the camera to let you know that he's a God that cannot lie. So if he says he's going to do it, you can believe it. It may not happen momentarily. It might not happen, hallelujah, in the next week or two. But because he said it, we can rely on God, and what we have to do, we have to move in that vein, knowing that it shall come to pass. Whenever it comes, it will come. Hallelujah. The truth about God, let's talk about the truth about God. God blesses all people who have faith in him. Now that's another, that's another gold nugget. If you have faith in God, God will bless you. If you have trust in God, God will bless you. If you keep the commandments of God, God will bless you. That is the kind of God that we serve. That's the truth about God. 
Let the church shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, if we want truth, let's trust God. Because yes. God will tell us truth. And even if we don't understand it, all we have to do is receive that truth. Receive that promise. And it will come to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we go into our, our lesson text, let's read something here quickly. The series overview talks about this. This series, Standing on the Promises of God, will cover events in the lives of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through the examples of these Old Testament patriarchs. We will see the importance of clinging to the promises of God. From Abraham being called to leave his homeland, which we're going to talk about today, to the birth of Isaac. From Jacob deceiving Esau to his wrestling match with an angel. These narratives reveal the steadfast nature of God's promises. To see God's promises come to pass in our lives, we must do as the patriarchs did, stand on the promises of God. In other words, trust in the word of God. Trust and believe. Trust and believe and you surely will receive. Hallelujah. I wanted to share that with you. Teaching the outline on today on the promises, it talks about Abram because his name was Abram before God changed his name. Abram heard God's voice. And his voice told him to leave his homeland. He told him he was going to make him a great nation. He told him he was going to make him a blessing to all the families of the earth. And he also explains to him that he wants to use us to bless others. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that today. Leaving your homeland. Abraham or Abram's day began just like any other day. Waking up in the morning. We're just paraphrasing here. Slipping on his robe and his slippers. And he opened his tent flap with a cup of Canaan coffee in his hand. Maybe he would till the ground or mend the fence. Or he certainly needed to shore up the boards in the barn before the storms blew through. So in other words, he had his agenda mm -hmm. and his schedule already set for the morning. How many of you have already awakened this morning? Hopefully you said, thank you, Lord, for another day that I've never seen before. But just in case you didn't do that, that might be a good thing to say, because if it had not been for the Lord, we would not have seen another day. Hallelujah. But how many of you have already planned what your day is going to be like in your schedules? I'm going to do this and thus and thus in time of today. I'm going to plan this for my meal today. And then I may go out today after I leave services. I'm going to do this and that and this and that and the other. Those are things that we do subconsciously because we just, hallelujah, assume that the day is going to go like we wanted it to go. But it didn't happen like that for Abraham on that day. Hallelujah. It said that he and his Sarah had been living with his father on his father's farm for a while and home was starting to feel more like home. So they began to do the things that they would normally do in a day. Hallelujah. But during that day, something happened to Abraham. Something alerted him. Something alarmed him. Something got his attention on that day. And that's how God does it sometimes. When we least expect it. When we're about to carry out our day, our, our uh, agenda, what we're going to do, sitting down with a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or deciding what we're going to do in our workplace today. God sometimes shows up 
unannounced. And when he shows up unannounced, we have to have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Now, in our outline, in our book, it said, Abram heard God's voice. Sometimes when God speaks, and he doesn't have to speak in a big, bold voice, sometimes he speaks in a soft, still voice. And sometimes we push that voice away. We don't want to hear what God has to say because it will interfere with our daily schedule. Hallelujah. I'm talking to somebody on this morning. But on that particular day, back in that land of Canaan, hallelujah, God spoke to Abram. And there was a voice that came into his ear, came into his brain, and began to get his attention. It was much deeper than Sarah's. So it wasn't Sarah's voice probably saying, did you do this? Or honey, do that? Or honey, do that? But it was a voice that he had heard before, but not as often as he would. It wasn't the voice of his wife. It was a little deeper, but it gave him some instructions, some instructions that he may not have expected on today. Hallelujah, or on that day. It says here, as he looked around, no one else seemed to hear it, and no one else seemed to be speaking to him. So he checked himself, he checked his surroundings, and there was no other person there, but he surely heard that voice. It sounded like it was coming from above, but no one was up in the barn loft. Hmm. Who was speaking to him? He heard the voice again. This time it was unmistakable. It was coming from above. It was coming from God. You know when God is speaking. Hallelujah. You can look around your room. But you know when it's God. Because his presence is near at the time. And you say, you know what? This can't be anybody but God. Hallelujah. Even Samuel experienced it when he was in his room trying to go to sleep and he heard the voice. He wasn't sure who it was, so he went to, hallelujah, the priest and said, did you call me? And he said, no, I didn't call you. Go back and go to sleep. But when the voice persisted and he continued to hear the voice, he went back into the room and asked Eli, the priest, I hear it again. Was it you? And Eli said, when you go back in your room, don't come back to me because it wasn't me speaking. But what I want you to do, Samuel, lay down in your bed. And when you hear that voice, say, yes, Lord, here am I. Hallelujah. That's what we have to do sometimes. When we are caught up in our own, hallelujah, congestion. And I say that because congestion can be things around us. We need to, hallelujah, push them aside before we can even hear God. But when we hear him, we need to take our time and look up and say, yes, Lord, here am I. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He said to him, this time it was unmistakable. It was coming from above. It was coming from God. God spoke to Abram and told him to leave home, leave his country, leave his father's house, leave his farm, and start walking where God was leading. God was telling Abraham to do something that was probably a little difficult if Abraham was comfortable where he was. Mm -hmm. It would be difficult for us if we're comfortable where we are. And God said, leave your family. Hallelujah. Get up and leave the house and leave the farm and leave all the necessities that you had with your father and that family. I want you to get up and follow that direction that I'm giving you. 
because the direction that I'm giving you is going to cause you to be great in the eyes of men. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you, hallelujah, a nation that no one will know but me. Yes. I'm going to also make you a blessing. You see, God is talking. When God tells you to do something, there is purpose in it. Mm -hmm. Don't think he's a God that doesn't have anything to do. But when there is a command, hallelujah, for you to do, he has purpose in it. And even if you don't under, understand it, he will, hallelujah, perform even on that day that he tells you to leave. So now, Abraham is faced in a little dilemma. What should I do? I heard the voice. I heard what he said. He told me to leave my comfort zone. Oh, you all know what I'm talking about when you talk about a comfort zone. Getting out there where it's a little dark. Getting out there where it's a little deep. Getting out there where you don't have uh, your, 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 your people around you to support you. It's just you. But don't forget, hallelujah, that God is greater than all of your support. Hallelujah. And God is your support. And once you stand up straight and let him support your, your spine, your back, you can speak, you can stand flat-footed and give the world what God told you to give them. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. Because, because God's promises are true. Mm. Hallelujah. Let the church shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Write something in the comments. To let me know you're receiving the things that God is speaking to you on today. See, it's on your behalf. I'm just delivering the message. But God is speaking to someone today. Letting them know it's time to get up and move out. And do the things that I would have you to do. No time left for doing your own agenda. For you're having your own space. It's my time now. Let's see what you will do with that. Hallelujah. He asked Abram to trust that he would show him where to walk. See, when God tells you to walk somewhere, you have to trust that God knows what he's talking about. I remember when we were moving, hallelujah, from a very small apartment into a home, didn't know if we were able to afford it, but had to trust God, believing that he was able to do it because he made a way where it seemed like it was no way. And as we began to walk in the stead of God, believing what he said, trusting in what he said, even when people laughed and scorned us, we trusted God and spoke it boldly. This is God's business, yes. and God is going to do what he said he was going to do. Hallelujah. That was 40 years ago that we've been in this home. Hallelujah. But everybody didn't believe that God could do it. Some people thought we depended on other people and other sources. But it was God and God alone. Hallelujah. God's promises are true. I want to encourage you on today. He told Abraham he was going to make him a great nation. And help me with my time to make sure my time is good. Because I don't want to go over my time. But he said he was going to make him a great nation. God's first command came coupled with God's first promise to Abram. I told you. When he gives you a command, he backs it up with a promise. Because he has purpose in your life. He said, I will make you a great nation. That must have been music to Abram's ears. Abram was just one man. But God was going to multiply Abram's influence to make him a great nation. And the influence that Abram had reflected on God. You see, that's why our influence to people... It has to be God. It has to be reflected on God. Yes. So people will trust God by what we say. And we say God can do this and that because look what he did for me. Yes. When I thought I was on death row. When I thought I was at death's door. When I thought I was out the door. God came in and blessed us. Hallelujah. And we believed him and trusted him. Mm -hmm. And it is so. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
he also told him, he said, in high honor. Now, let me go back a little bit. Hallelujah. I'm still on 173, page 173. He said, it is one thing to be the mayor of a city or even the governor of a state or promise of province. Let me slow down here a little bit. But to be the figurehead of a nation, a great nation, is a high honor. See, God is not playing with us. When he said that, hallelujah, if you humble yourself, that he will exalt you, he doesn't mean exalting you on your porch step, hallelujah, or on your stair step. But when he exalts you, he exalts you in front of people yes. that people will know that yes. he has orchestrated your very step. Your mm -hmm. every step has been orchestrated by him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No doubt in um, uh, Abraham's mind, he would have taken sovereign act of God. God was not finished loading up the gift table with promises. See, that was just the first promise. But then he went on. He said, okay, I finished with making you a great nation, telling you that. I want to tell you something else. I will make you a blessing to all the families of the earth. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're supposed to be. See, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it in. I'm taking it from Old Testament to New Testament. Think about it. We are supposed to be a blessing. Those of us that claim to know God, claim to follow God, and the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we should be able to take a blessing to other families. Hallelujah. Letting them know that this God will yes. secure you in your steps. I can guarantee it. You see, you can't guarantee anything else but God's word. Yes. And I tell them all the time, I can't guarantee what I say, but if you look in this word, if he said, I will multiply you, I will, hallelujah, I will esteem you, esteem you, hallelujah, I will bring things to pass. If he says it, I can guarantee it mm. will happen. He will multiply. Take a penny that you have and lay it on that scripture in the book of St. John, chapter number 14 and verse number 12. Hallelujah. If you have a problem, hallelujah, with a neighbor or with a source and they've sent you an ugly letter, take that letter and lay it on those scriptures and believe God and watch what he will do. Got so many phone calls calling me back saying, lay fights. What you told me to do, it came to pass. Didn't have much money, but laid it on the scripture. It came to pass. Was about to lose, lose my home. Put it on the scripture. Hallelujah, the pink slip or whatever color it was. Laid it on the scripture. It came to pass. I still have my home. I was sick. Got a bad report from the doctor. Laid it on the my scripture. God, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Receive that promise, yes. my friends. My saints of God, my family, receive the promise. God will not lie to you. Not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants to use us to bless others. You see, if we hold our blessing to ourselves, nobody else will know about this God. That's why we got to tell it. I have to tell them. Those scriptures come to pass. Hallelujah. If I didn't have any food, didn't worry. Hallelujah. Knowing that God was going to bless. Found money in my, 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 my flower pot one time. Not a lot of money. Only $7. Somebody gave it to me. Dropped it off when they came to the Bible class. Knew I wasn't going to receive it. So dropped it in my flower pot and left. And when I got ready to clean, I saw it laying in my flower pot. I took the $7. I needed food for my family for the night. Hallelujah. Six of us at the time. Didn't know how I was going to get it, but took the $7 and I began to bless it and say, Lord, you multiply, multiply. this $7 when Hallelujah. I go to this store. Either make a sale that I can afford or something. Mm -hmm. And as I went in to the store with the $7, hallelujah, met somebody that didn't even live in my neighborhood, but I knew them. They were shopping in my neighborhood, in my store. 
and asked me what I was there for. I said, well, I came to buy a little something for my children. Felt like the lady back in the day, I'm going to uh, have this oil and this cornmeal and we're going to make this cake and we're going to eat it and die. Didn't say that, but that's how I felt because I only had $7. Mm. Hallelujah. But God knew what mm. to do with the $7. Well. I didn't tell her how much money I had, but she said, you know what? I'm in this neighborhood. I needed some food too. I, 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 I want to I tell you what I want you to do. And I said, well, what do you want me to do? She said, I want you to take what you need, put it in my basket. Take, buy your food, put it in my basket. Let me pay for it. Hallelujah. I didn't ask her, hallelujah, to pay for anything. Mm. Didn't tell her how much money I had. Oh God. But God was the one that knew that I trusted him. Yes, and yes. I was going to receive his promise because he said I could speak those things that were not mm. as though they were. I mm. knew when I went to the supermarket, I was going to come back with some food for my family. Hallelujah. I've heard other testimonies too. Hallelujah. Saints of God, we're going through this lesson like this because I want to encourage your heart. I knew people that set the table, didn't have a bit of food in the refrigerator. Hallelujah. She lives in Oklahoma City now, but she set the table like she was going to have a feast. Hallelujah. She began to bless God and pray at the table and she got a knock at the door and people came with bags of groceries into her house mm. that her family could eat. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Mm. You don't have to worry about this God. This God will keep his promises. Yes. He's an on time God. Yes. He's a God that will take care of his people. All you have to do is trust him, is believe him. Know that even if you're sick, don't speak sickness in your life. Mm. Say, you know what? May not be feeling like I want to feel today, but later on today, I'm going to be better. Yes. Later on tomorrow, I'm going to be better than I was today because I serve a God yes. that is a healing God. Let the church shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let hallelujah. me see your comments in hallelujah in the comment box. It tells us. It says, hallelujah, God told Abraham to leave his home and his relatives. And he also gave Abraham promises, hallelujah, to back it up. Now, Abraham did not know God the way he learned about God. He knew what God could do, but he didn't really know God the way he had to learn about God. But he had to walk. God said, follow me. Yes. Let me read that again. He said, God was not finished. He said, uh, Abraham, where did it say that? God asked Abraham to trust that he would show him where to walk. You see, when God shows you where to walk, mm. you will walk therein. You might want to make a left-hand turn when you're driving in your car. But God might say, I want you to turn right. I'm going to make it safe. Look in your rear view mirror. See that there's no other cars coming. No other vehicles on the side. No other pedestrians walking across the street. Then get over in that right lane and turn, make a right-hand turn. There's a man down waiting for you at a laundromat, hallelujah, waiting to hear what you have to tell him about the Lord. There's a woman at the grocery store waiting to hear what you have to tell her about the Lord. You see, it's about us delivering the message to people, yeah. blessing people, not necessarily with money, not necessarily with things of value, but the word of God is so valuable when you put it out there. Let them know, listen, this is your time. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That's why when I pray, I ask God to anoint the ears mm -hmm. of the hearers yes. that they might hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. He said, I will make you a blessing to all the families of the earth. I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curses thee. See, God is the kind of God, mm -hmm. if he gives you instructions to give somebody, and they reject you, they're really not rejecting you. They're rejecting God. 
And God said not to worry. They're going to curse you. We go, I'm going to curse them back. You don't worry. You don't do it. I want you to bless them. I want you to pray for those mm -hmm. that despitefully yes, use you. Yes. It's not your job to curse anybody. It's your job to bless. Let me handle the big stuff. Yes. I have the big idea. I have the big plan. Let me handle the big stuff. You just obey my word mm -hmm. and walk where I tell you to walk. Let the church shout hallelujah. hallelujah. How's my time? All right. It says here, I'll go to page number 175. It says, we must obey God completely. Now, God trusted Abraham to a point. Abraham didn't do everything that God said in the beginning. Hallelujah. But he got it right. And that's what has to happen. If we don't obey the first time, correct it. Repent, get back on the boat. Get back on and say, Lord, I didn't do it your way. I was a little fearful, but I know that if you bless me, hallelujah, and keep my mind focused, I will do what you're asking me to do. And this time, I'm going to do it right. This time, I'm going to walk right. You know, sometimes fear does come in. But know that you know that you know that fear is not of God. He said, I did not give you the spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. So remember, when you feel fear coming, understand that somebody else is in the presence. Yes. Hallelujah. Rebuke him mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus yes. and call him out. Say, God did not give me the spirit of fear, mm -hmm. but of love. And a power and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. The power that I have, yeah. he gave me that I can tread on serpents and on scorpions and even over the power of the enemy. And he said that nothing by any means shall hurt me. See, I'm feeling very powerful right now because I got God's word to back me up. Yes. You should start speaking God's word. Yes, he yes. said, live yes. and not die. Yes. If you're having a breathing problem on today, hallelujah, some of us are because of things that are going on in the atmosphere, in the element with the hallelujah pandemic. But I double dog dare you well, to take a deep breath in Jesus' in name, name Jesus. and then release the breath and say, I'm healed. I will no longer, hallelujah, hallelujah, feel this congestion in my chest. It has to go. It cannot stay mm. in Jesus' name. Right. Hallelujah. Receiving God's promise. Hallelujah. hallelujah. God does not grade obedience on a curve. Remember that. You know, you have some teachers that grade on a curve. That means you can hit it and miss it if you got the majority of it right. Uh, and she'll just say, well, he understands it. He could have done this better, but I'm going to grade him on a curve. God does not grade on a curve. Not obedience. You either are obedient or disobedient. Mm -hmm. And that's why you have to understand if you are disobedient, you have to correct it and get back on or get back in the obedience line. You see, there's an obedience line. And that line is like a conveyor. Mm -hmm. It just continues going forward. Hallelujah. And on the way going forward, the blessings just start dropping down in this line. That's the line you want to be in. You don't want to be on the line of disobedience. That line is stuck. Mm -hmm. It's not moving. Hallelujah. All your blessings are, hallelujah, held up. You see everybody else getting blessed. You see everybody else moving forward. You see everybody else going in a higher dimension. But you're stuck because you're in the disobedience line. Get out of that line, saints of God, and get in the line of obedience. Line up to God's word. Line up to what God would have you to do so you can seek, hallelujah, hallelujah, success in your life. Hallelujah. Let the church shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Abraham, Abraham received the promise by faith. You see, we cannot see. We cannot see God. We can't see him. And we walk by faith, not by sight. We see the things that are coming at us. But by faith, we have to know, hallelujah, that God is the one that's going to bring us through. That's why we have to stop struggling so much and stop, start believing that God is going to bring us out. Stop struggling in our minds about how we're going to do some things. Stop even trying to make our own agenda. Let God write the agenda for you. Let him do it. Hallelujah. His promises are true. Let him write your agenda, your agenda and then go forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. And last but not least, we want to say that um, Abraham received his promise by faith. He believed what God had for him and he moved on. And we're going to all through the month, we're going to learn about the things that happened after Abraham. But Abraham started it. And as I internalize, I will let you know that we need to remember the probing question God asked Abraham to answer. Is anything too hard for the Lord? And I ask that question today. Hallelujah. Is there anything too hard for God mm -hmm. to do? You can't even write that in the comments because there is not anything too hard for God. Ask God to let you know if there's anything you should be doing while you wait for him. You see, you can wait on his promise, but you have to do something while you wait. Somebody preached a message. In the meantime, you have to continue to believe that it will come mm -hmm. to pass. Hallelujah. And when it comes to pass, and until it comes to pass, you're going to keep that word going forth. Keep believing God and staying in that obedience line. Hallelujah. It is easy to forget how faithful our God is. Whether we are listening to monitors and machines in the hospital or we are pouring over bills at home, or we are sitting on the front row at a funeral. At these times, we can remember God's promises and ask out loud, is there anything too hard for the Lord? We will find out just what Abraham found out as we continue in the other uh, chapters next week. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. As I close out, we're going to have someone come and do the altar call and the, the other things that will pertain to that. But as I close out, remember this. God's promises are true, and we have to think about this. Greater is he that is in me than, it, than he that's in the world. So keep that in mind. God's promises are true. In Jesus' name, God bless you as we receive our pastor. Oh, what a wonderful, what a wonderful lesson, Lady Fikes. May I sit here with you, you for a moment? You can do that, yes. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord to everyone. You know, uh, I was just thinking about, I'm good. I was just thinking about some of the things that you said. Um, the one thing I know about God, he keeps his promise. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He keeps his end of the bargain. Amen. And there was um, a famous president, Robert F. Kennedy, who said, John, um, John. John F. Kennedy. Amen. Thank you so much. You know, and he said these words. He says, uh, ask not what your country can do for you, mm -hmm. but what you can do for, for your, your country. country. This is, this is the time now. This is the time now, church, friends, yes. family. Yes. That we have the obligation. Yes, yes. To bring this bread of life. Yes. To a dying world. Oh, yes. So true. The promise was kept. Yes. The promise 
that Jesus said. He said he wouldn't leave us comfortless. Mm -hmm. That he would send the comforter yes, yes. in his yes. name. Yes. And that was the Holy Ghost. I, I'm saying to you today that we have to live up to the bargain that we oh, make you with God. Yes. He has kept his bargain. Yes. He has kept his he promise. Has. Yes, he has. He sent his son, Jesus, yes. to perpetuate us back to God. Yes. And uh, I want you to know that he's our perpetuator and that we now have the right to the tree of life. Um, there is no other way that I can explain today mm -hmm. that we have the promise yes, yes. from God. And that promise is being kept as I speak right now. There's a plan of salvation. And that plan and that promise was if I repent of yes. my sins. Yes. I shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost when I am baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of my sins. That promise is kept. And we read about the, the father of faith. Mm -hmm. That's Abraham who kept the promise. And because he kept the promise generations to come will be blessed. Yes, yes. Now, you have to keep the promise so that generations to come will be blessed. Yes. Being baptized in Jesus' name to rise to walk in the newness of life. Mm -hmm. I know for a fact that God is ready. Yes. I know for a fact that God is willing and just. Yes. And this is what we must do because there is a crown of glory laid up for us. This is not our final destination. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so today, we're saying, for all of those who are out there in the viewing audience, if you can make known in your comments that this lesson that was taught today was for you, yes. please do so. Uh, this is the call now. We are calling for souls yes. to be saved in this last and evil day. Hallelujah. And this is why Jesus came that we might have a right to the tree of life. Yes, yes. We have men and women that will baptize you in Jesus' name yes. for the remission of your sins. Yes. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Isn't that marvelous? That's so much. That's a marvelous thing to do and to have done yes. in your life. A new beginning. Just think to rise to walk in the newness of life. There's nothing compared to eternal life, church. This is not our final destination. Yes, yes. Lady Fikes, we thank God for the things that were said today. Yes. We thank God for you, the viewing audience out there in that place out there called virtue. Amen. And we want you to know that we thank you for your support. Hallelujah. Your charitable contributions. Yes. We thank you for your love offerings, all the things that you've done. We thank you for the, 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 the acts of kindness. Yes. We thank you for that, church. Continue to support us with the PayPal, the cash uh, app, and uh, 
give it a fire, I believe. Mm -hmm. Amen. We thank you. That's the support that you gave us in 2021 is because we're here today. Mm -hmm. It was because of your support and a faith walk. Yes. Amen. We're thankful for your viewing audience out there. Please keep us in your hearts and in your prayers yes. during this pandemic. Our families are doing well now. We got hit a moment, but we sustained the hit. Yes. Because yes. we're covered under the blood of Jesus. Yes. Amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you and give you peace. This is our prayer. And remember this. Whatever you do. And wherever you go. Take Jesus with you. God bless you. In Jesus' name.